Let's begin talking about the vision and the robotics. Present us what you have learned last week about these topics, okay? And then get into the details of imitation learning. Please, go ahead. So this was the first paper that I uh, start begin with. And uh, this paper was uh, about the deep learning or the model structures that are used in the robotics for different tasks. And it also presented uh, different strategies of training uh, the models. And uh, it also compared uh, like different architectures of the models uh, with each other, like uh, in the terms of uh, speed and in terms of categorization on some specific data set, not uh, different data sets. They choose a data set and then they compared the results and they, uh, they told some general outputs of uh, those model architectures. So similarly, uh, in this paper, there was also a comparison of what can be done, like what uh, learning strategy can be utilized in robotics. So one of those learning strategy was the imitation learning. So uh, what caught my attention in the imitation learning is that in the imitation learning, we don't actually need, to, because like when we need to perform some tasks in robotics, we need a high level of programming or defining a lot of, uh, um, a lot of things for modeling the movement or movement or the actions of the robot. So if the, if the task is complex and we want the robot to learn it, we can simply show it how it is done. And by just seeing it, the robot knows or uh, extracts the actions and then it, uh, it tries to learn those actions and perform those actions. Okay, at this point, robot will watch as far as I understand. Yes. Right, robot watches what a human does, for example. Yes. And then tries to mimic it. Yes. Right. But yes. in the reinforcement learning, we also provide a, a controlled environment and we provide the reward as a measurement of how it successfully fulfills the target or the expected behavior. So, in the imitation learning, do we have a, such a mechanism? Sir, uh, in the imitation learning, there are a lot of uh, implementations for imitation learning, but there is, uh, there are like a couple of implementations with uh, which include this reinforcement learning, like uh, uh, when the robot has seen the task being done by the human, then it performs, it tries to do that task, and if it succeeds, then we have a reward for it. This is a kind of a reinforcement learning implementation. Okay, let me ask a general question that, very general one. What is it, or what are the differences between the reinforced learning and the imitation learning? Reinforcement learning and imitation learning, sir. Uh, actually, like the reinforcement learning is about, we don't have any supervision there and we provide it in, uh, we like, Deploy the robot. Yes, it is. Okay. It is self-supervised. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, like in the in this imitation learning, when uh, we train, like uh, when the robot is seeing, like uh, if we go to the imitation learning through observation, so the robot is uh, watching the video or like the agent or anything like uh, we just process the we process the video and from that video we actually know uh, already that what task has been done what actions has been done and then in the training process in the training process robot will watch the video and then actually compare uh, that uh, video or like its own uh, its own extraction of the actions or uh, or the target or the goal of the video and then it will compare it with the already available one so like if we have such a data set that uh, we know like in which video what actions have been done and what tasks have been done that is my understanding what i thought maybe because of it and uh, my knowledge might be limited very limited okay, okay. let's continue let's yes. continue 
okay so this was the inspiration that i can and then for that purpose i uh, searched and found this recent advances in imitation learning from observation survey article it is of 2019 not uh, very old so they presented uh, actually a detailed review of imitation learning its background and its uh, different kinds of uh, implementation that it can uh, how it can be implemented and what challenges are present so uh, at the uh, like two there are two main challenges in the imitation learning one is the embodiment mismatch and the second is the viewpoint difference uh, embodiment mismatch is that thing like if a human demonstrator is demonstrating a task a task and uh, some robot or some agent uh, is watching it it must not have the same dynamics or kinematics or the structure as the human uh, human what, like explainer uh, that, that is performing the task so uh, this is the embodiment mismatch and the other thing is viewpoint difference because like the robot or the agent is watching or processing the video in a manner like uh, how the video was recorded, but it must not be equal to how the robot sees itself. Like it's actually related to the uh, frames of reference, like what is the origin on, and what is the frame of reference for the robot and what is the frame of reference for the agent that is performing the task in the video. So those are the main uh, challenges and those have been catered. Uh, by a lot of ta uh, a lot of uh, implementations of uh, the imitation learning but towards the end this paper also provided some uh, future or potential research possibilities so one is thing is uh, one thing is to implement this imitation learning through visual odometry like uh, extracting the 3d pose of uh, the of the expert agent that is performing the task and the subject of uh, or, or the goal of the task and their positions so like uh, when we if we can extract their 3d pose and like uh, their movement and the and the difference and the distance between the agent and uh, the subject like if uh, we talk about uh, a human grabbing grabbing something and then uh, picking it and putting somewhere so if we can estimate uh, the 3d pose of human and of that object that uh, it grabbed i think somehow this this said it can be implemented this imitation learning can be implemented through that and it has not been implemented quite a lot with this uh, with this technique so uh, for that purpose uh, then i searched and i found this motion reasoning for goal based imitation learning actually uh, so what they uh, like i i studied a couple of papers there are a lot uh, there are a couple of more papers after it but it was one of the papers and it targeted on the imitation learning and uh, in the imitation learning what they targeted specifically is like extracting the goal of the video not actually like not mainly the actions this is actually catering the embodiment mismatch point uh, because like if the if there is a human hand and perform the task it the robot or the robotic arm must not be similar to it so they just extract what was the goal of that video so like picking up the picking up the box of the cereal and then putting it uh, somewhere and then putting it back so what was actually the task so that they uh, they extracted here like uh, it was initially in the storage and then uh, what was done is picking up a bowl and putting it on a stuff and then again putting the box in the storage so they extracted the goal and now if we can extract the goal of the in the video and our robot has the dynamic possibility or the kinematics possibility to perform such a task like to grab something and move it something and if we know the goal actually of the video we don't actually need for the for transferring like uh, the body coordinates of the of the expert agent to the robot agent the robot can simply it, it knows what it needs to be done and then it can perform this task so this is actually kind of that they actually did not uh, 
implemented quite on the robot. It's just actually about the extraction of the goal of the video that they perform. And, what, and it is actually what I am also intending to do, not to go towards the implementation on a physical robot or something, but actually about the perception. That is- so that, That's the first step, I believe, right? So yes. first, uh, as a robot, we need to watch the given scene, the we need to detect the changes in the scene, and then we need to understand which part of these changes are actually creating the task, right? Yes, sir. So we need to create the goal of the task, limitation of the task. So basically, in a given scene, we need to understand the, the simplest thing, what has been changed in the scene, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. Am I right? So yes, sir. First step of the imitation, you need to detect the target Sorry. action correctly. Yes. To yes. do so, we need to do a image processing yes. or video processing yes. to yes. understand uh, what has been changed in the position, in the location, but we have the fixed viewpoint. Yes, sir. Am I right? Yes, sir. Then we need to, for example, if something's changed, we need to locate the object, detect the object, then uh, segment the object, then coordinate in this, where this object before and then with respect yes. to other object locations. Yes, sir. And then we need to decide how to do it later as a yes. robot. Yes, sir. Okay, so with this respect to, so will you continue elaborate on how to detect this? Is that, do you know the, how people are doing this? Yes, uh, like it is actually uh, related to all like deep learning uh, architectures and like they are implementing. As we can see here, uh, we have this uh, box that is, uh, um, capturing the object or detecting the object and if we can detect the object and then in the sequence of the video like uh, we can maybe utilize uh, i think they utilized the rcnn the recurrent neural uh, a kind of recurrent neural network and then uh, they detected the sequence and after so like that is actually what they do uh, what they did they actually watch the video in the video frames they detected the object and then in, by use by using the convolutional neural network they detected the object and by using the recurrent neural network they detected its motion like from where it started and from where it ended and then from that thing they actually inferred what task actually has been done in this small segment of the video so in that manner, they uh, did, uh, they extracted the main goal of the video, as uh, uh, like they a little bit described in the abstract as well, I believe. But, but here is a big problem. If it is very simple idea, just moving around uh, some uh, objects in the scene, yes. of course we can detect and we can maybe find a new location the direction from the old to new location, maybe the speed of the uh, movement, right? Yes. Maybe the angles necessary to keep the object in a uh, projection, yes. right? These are maybe done, but if we think about a longer sequence of video, like cooking, like a recipe to cook yes. something, Yes. And there could be maybe uh, 20, 25, I don't know, 30 sub scenes. And yes. each sub scene, there could be many complicated movements. Yes, sir. And maybe some of them are not seen or recorded in the properly. Yes. So, do you have an idea how the researchers approach these kind of problems? uh actually what uh, you said like if we cannot see clearly i think i didn't see such a thing but i did uh, study another paper this is uh, the robot learning through observation via course to find grain video summarization 
Actually, mm -hmm. that, that's what I am trying to say. So the, the granality of the yeah. movements of the objects of the uh, the the what the we are trying to do as a target is important. If your target is very fine level grain, yes. so it is very it looks like simple. Yes. Sir. But if it's gonna be getting coarse or longer sequences, yes. I think we need to implement some different uh, maybe hyper algorithms, yes, sir. meta algorithms for handling how to do so in imitation learning. So you can elaborate on this. Okay, sir. So and this was another paper I learned, uh, I studied after that. So it was about learning through observation by course to fine grain video summarization. In that actually, what they did is uh, they summarized a video. Like they said, there are a lot of long and long videos like the live log videos and the surveillance videos. And uh, we don't know actually what are the important parts of that video that actually needs to be, and maybe if we talk about the imitation learning for a robot, then what, what part of the video needs to be understood for expecting those actions or the main task. So for that purpose, they did this uh, summarization uh, technique. So like, uh, and they did it step by step, like initially from, uh, <clears throat> from the video they actually summarized main different parts of the video and then from in inside those parts then they detected uh, uh, like these small small different parts like uh, initially uh, it uh, adjusted the chair the girl adjusted the chair and then it is sitting on the chair and then just moving his hand for the wiping for wiping the table so then in the next, in the next uh, summarization, they actually uh, detected this motion. So actually this was the main task in one of, uh, in one of, from one of the tasks, like she sat here, but why she sat here, actually, she was doing this uh, motion for wiping the table. So this was one of the tasks. So this is actually one of the technique that they did in this, uh, like they summarized the video. And from the video, they expected so it video. looks like uh, video captioning, right? Yes. It's another task yes. in video processing. So image captioning or video captioning. So in image captioning, we try to create a caption for the given image. And video captioning, of course, we try to create the, uh, a caption which interleaves among the frames. So here I understand that they try to create similar approach to summarize what has been done in the uh, video. So by using the key frames, they try to create the scenes, scene changes. And during the same scene, what's happening? So trying to create a definition, what has been done during these frames and then what's next, right? So actually we try to create a definition and find the, the cutting points in the time, the changing the phase points, the changing points, the breaking points in the time so that we can say that, for example, here, just wipe the table, tidy the chair, blah, blah, right? And it, it is actually quite a recent paper in 2021 they did this task in this year itself. So, but how can we translate uh, the this video sequ the sequences, image sequences or videos to the task? This is the, just the first step. Is that right? It's just the first step to understand the, what's happening in these frames yes sir. but then that is actually you are gonna continue i believe after no. wiping the table assume that we already caption or we already recognize the movement mm -hmm. let's say that uh, from left to right and right to left hands moving on the table 
we can define like that, not wiping, but maybe we can define yeah. the movement to help the robot to imitate it, right? Yeah. Then what happens? So actually, uh, that is the part like I intend to focus on because uh, as you also uh, is all, uh, you also said or advised like it, we can it is not actually possible to build a robot or test uh, these things on that so this is actually the perception part i believe so what is i intend to do is also something related to only the perception like if the if we can uh, like successfully detect the the details of the action that was performed or uh, the sequence or or the goal of the like those techniques that they did in these papers one in the pre previous one was focused on the goal detection what was the goal and this one is actually interested in the motion of the in the motion of the task like to complete to accomplish the task what motion was done so like uh, by detecting these things we know like what has been done in the video and the translation to robot domain is like another step and maybe we cannot uh, focus in on focus it on it in our uh, research we can only focus it on the person okay let's wrap so we are talking about imitation learning yes and there are some phases you need to put these phases in imitation learning in a scope so as far as we have discussed so far the first step is to uh, specify the task as the movements in the video using the terms or using some model because we need to create a model otherwise using just English words will not help to translate the target the goal in the video to the robot it's not easy so uh, as far as I understand we need to begin with a controlled environment and we need to create some uh, dictionary kind of a mechanism such that whatever in the videos we need to create in terms of some uh, limited number of commands, right? So we cannot look every video and we cannot caption everything. We can do this with some accuracy, but it will not useful then to translate this goal in a way that the robot can imitate it. So basically, I think that if you go uh, and look for the literature, I think there are some models to create or to extract the information from the videos or the frames such that it will construct a basis for understanding the goal and the how to uh, achieve this goal. So here, uh, some lady or man, I don't know, sitting down on a chair and wiping the surface of the table. But for our robot, assume that we'll go over there near to the table and use his or its hands to wipe something is a totally different uh, task for it. As you already explained, the body embodied, embodied change, yes, right? It is different challenge, but we can restrict ourselves to identify the goal. No problem with that, but we need to relate with it the next step. Yes. Otherwise, uh, we can approach this problem as just video captioning or image captioning. Am I right? Yes, sir. So what uh, is that man doing? It is wiping the table. Yes, sir. And uh, another thing is like initially, uh, what maybe I showed that one or no, no, that one maybe. Yeah, it is ahead. So there is another part. Okay, so this was another. Um, can I continue? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Yes. Okay, sir. So this is another thing that you are actually uh, just 
described right now it's like we can also do uh, the captioning of the video so actually this paper uh, summarized long videos and then of the summary video they then captioned the video so like what important part or what important action has been done in the video so this was also another paper i reviewed it and uh, yeah so this is another thing 3d human pose machines with self supervised learning so uh i don't actually quite know if it employs the reinforcement learning or not i tried to avoid like going through the reinforcement learning through uh, throughout the studies of these papers but what actually they did is interesting like uh, they detected they extracted the human 3d pose of the human and that is present in the video or the image so uh, like this is actually a, a reference uh, a reference that uh, this paper gave uh, in the visual edometry when they said that uh, in the perception part uh, we can do it through the visual edometry they gave the reference of this paper so it actually did this this paper did this like they extracted the 3d pose so if we can uh, extract the 3d pose like in this uh, in this video like we know the task and if we know actually the position or the coordinates of this table and the chair and so i think maybe uh, it's not possible or it's that complicated but what i thought is like maybe we can do something like that if like the robot knows how to traverse a specific amount in each axis like the z axis x axis and y axis and we know the exact location or the pose of the table that is lying uh, in its environment so the robot knows how far it is from uh, from the robot and how lifted it is and at what point the task was done and at what point it needs to place it at its hands so in that manner i think he can proceed some of this imitation learning i think if we can combine these two things like the 3d post thing and uh, this uh, summary video summarization or the action extraction from the video i think this can be utilized for this imitation learning on the task i see but these are two different problems the domains are different i believe right yes, so sir. in the in this paper we know that the, the we can recognize the body movements no problem with that i understand i mean no, not no problem it's a well known problem already people working on it so you can caption the movements of the body all right so okay. far so good uh, but uh, in our problem you we would like to teach something to a robot uh, by just giving an example of what to do and the, we will not specifically tell the goal yes here for example we can just walk and we want to, the robot tries to walk like us or we can yes. sit down like and then the robot should imitate how we sit down as far as i understand right and here the basic uh, step here first recognize the movement with respect to our junction points and we need to translate this movement to the robot uh, embodiment right yes, and then let the robot finds how to do this thing right uh, by imitating yes sir in this yeah. in this approach i think that it's much more uh, constrained environment so that we are sure that we have the human body we have this number of junctions in the human body and we can get rid of the background easily and we can uh, locate the movement in these junction points with respect to the whole body then we can create a model to understand the required uh, commands to the robot according to the 
uh, movement, speed, acceleration, uh, these. And for me, uh, actually, yes, uh, very uh, controlled environment, we can do this. And as you share here, there are several uh, videos as far as I know, right? They are uh, implemented already this. So they are just showing some uh, people, uh, I'm sorry, some figures to the robots and robots imitates it, right? So I, I, I know this and uh, this is possible, uh, but to do so, uh, still, we need to create a body model of human being and of the robots, right? Oh, but uh, yeah, maybe. So I would like to share with you something. Okay. Let me share with you. Um, uh, maybe can I uh, just go ahead and like there are just a couple of things more in this slide. We will go, yeah. but I would like to share. Okay, so can I, should I stop? Stop sharing? Yes, please. Okay. Do you see now what I am sharing? Yes, sir. I'm seeing. Okay. Here, you see this moment, right? Yes. Actually, this moment is just copied from a human being. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yes, sir. And it is almost real time, so imitation that. Yes. Okay, so you can continue. All right. Oh, okay. Actually, uh, that is the thing uh, the girl is performing. And what initially uh, I thought also of this imitation learning, but actually it requires this uh, physical thing and that thing. So that is uh, the imitation learning I thought of uh, maybe by just viewing the video, like watching the video, if it can mimic something or it can learn the task or, the, or how to do the task. That is what I thought maybe it can. Okay, be so maybe for our cases maybe for our cases we can just do like that uh, maybe if you like we we need to begin from a simple controlled environment right and then move to uh, a complex environment so you you can continue to literature review but you need to decide one direction. Yes, sir. This direction could be to understand only, maybe it's much more constrained, human body moves and imitate it. Okay. This one could be one. So uh, there are many uh, research, I believe, about uh, how to recognize the human body and then how to uh, imitate it is another problem. Okay. But how to do, uh, define it and how to uh, record it as a command, as the instruction to a robot is different. For that case, if you like, you can please continue reading the uh, about uh, imitation learning in robotics. And then we need to look for the recent papers about how to recognize the body moves, the positioning, and, and then we need to create a uh, model how to translate it from the video to a instruction set for example, a robot. And uh, believe me that there are very cheap robots. They are just trying to imitate. Uh, actually, they are toys. Maybe you have seen, but I don't know if I can find and show you. There are some uh, very simple toy robots. Actually, what you do, 
you are just standing across the robot and you do something and they try to repeat you. Have you seen these robots? No. no. Okay, I will share with it with you. But it's a good research point. So for the next time, please try to be more specific about the uh, the domain. I mean, what we are gonna do in which domain? Are we gonna just uh, creating a human body imitation? Yeah. Or in a general wiping a desktop? I don't know. No. <laughs> actually, um, I'm cutting your, uh, excuse me. Uh, the thing is actually, I'm uh, that paper as uh, I showed, like uh, it captured the 3D pose of human. I actually do not intend to uh, like copy or mimic the human movement or specifically capture the human pose. But what I thought of this thing is if uh, the if we are like captioning a video, we are extracting the motions in a video. So if we can detect the objects 3D pose in the video, that can be helpful. That is what actually I was uh, trying to think. So like, because, uh, because of the embodiment mismatch, if we have uh, something like some task being performed in an environment, and uh, we know that uh, what was the positions, what were the positions of everything inside uh, in, in that environment, like uh, of the table and of the object, like maybe in that one where the lady was wiping. So maybe if we know the, uh, position can we do that like uh, in a video uh, if that video let us consider the wiping video can we extract the 3d pose of the objects in that thing like of yeah. all the objects yeah it, it can be done but first of all as usual as we already discussed we need to think about first the data set if we are talking about the supervised learning so yeah. otherwise uh, without data you know that you cannot train in a supervised model. You cannot train at all. So most of the time we are limited with the, the, the object classes already contained in the data set. First of all, this, okay. So for my suggestion, we need to keep the problem very simple, very simple, very limited, very constrained environment such that we can begin with a toy project, very, very exactly. toy project. Exactly. To implement the, maybe a complex model, maybe a complex approach, but to a very limited Simple. number of objects, very limited number of movements, goals, uh, so that we can understand the mechanics behind the model. But uh, we cannot jump into a very complex environment in the data set and try to understand how the model interacts with it. It will confuse us. Yes, sir. So right. We cannot build the Roma in one night. Okay. <laughs> so my suggestion is to that, please just approach this problem by reviewing the uh, recent papers and the implementation of these papers may be looking for the videos or the, their demonstrations to understand their limitations. And then we need to look for a data set, a video data set or the image data set. I don't know for to now. And we need to uh, limit or specify the, our domain. Okay. If we say that, for example, our domain is the human body movements and then we need to create a, at the end of the uh, model, the model will output the, uh, the body junction movement angles and the speeds accelerations, three parameters, for example. We need to look for these kind of, uh, this kind of data sets. And then there are many already proposed models methods, approaches like imitation learning. We, we can begin with a limited data set, with a limited or uh, 
lower complexity problem, then we can get into the problem by using some model. But otherwise, we can get easily confused. Yes, sir. absolutely. Do we agree? Yes, sir. Okay, so for the next uh, meeting, let's say that it is go on to reading the imitation learning okay. and try to look for specifically the data sets that they have been used in their literature and try to download them and try to look into them, okay, the data sets, because without data sets, we cannot do it. And then uh, try to locate the domain if we have any data sets, it means that we cite the domain. All right. Yes, and then look for the, the simple ideas first, not the complicated ideas, because we cannot implement the complicated ideas in the day one. Yes. We need to follow the historical improvements so that we need to begin with the, maybe the, the, the silly idea first, the simple idea, and we need to get Adding, adding or improving these ideas by uh, following the recent papers, all right? But if you jump over to the very recent paper, I guarantee that it will be very complicated for us to implement and find any result. Yes, 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 you're right. Definitely. Okay, so for the next time, mm -hmm. it's a very good presentation, thank you. Now we can orient ourselves to the problem, imitate the, maybe the human moments, right? Yeah. Or the, uh, maybe trying to caption the video with regard to the object in the task in the video or the body movements. Right. But yeah. it, the, the data set will dominate us, okay? Mm. So focus on the data set. Okay. Sir, actually, uh, there is another thing. So, like, this is one flow that uh, I was interested in, like this imitation learning part. But another thing, uh, actually, I wanted to present these things to you just to like get your advice, like what you uh, what you can suggest can be fruitful, and we can maybe like accomplish that thing. It's not necessary that I do something, but I want to do something that is accomplishable that we can achieve actually. Oh. Okay, we can accomplish this. So I am trying to put you in a context. Yes. In this context, we we need to first, the basic idea is to take an object in the image, right? Or video. Okay. And then detecting the objects in the image is not enough in video uh, pre -pre processing. We need to temporal data, the data changing in time, for example, location of the objects in the frames. Okay. And then we, we need to create a, a text uh, definition, the caption, or a model showing that what's changing on the model from A point to B, B C. So you can create a topology, a graph to explain what's changing in the time in the frames. Maybe some objects are get disappears, right? So for for this, we can do uh, the problem is object detection, object localization, and then image captioning and video captioning. Exactly, sir. Okay, yes. so we need to begin from this. Maybe we can relate imitation learning afterwards. A little and, yes. Right? So you already have spent some time on object detection, right? Yes, sir. And we, we need to now, to locate the object, we need to bounding boxes putting. This is one step. Maybe you can work on it for a simple data set and understand how to locate the objects. Okay. Then we need to jump to the object tracking problem. Tracking. In the object tracking problem, we need to track the object in the upcoming frames, for example, prediction of the upcoming, or just 
the trajectory is in the videos. You can check this, okay? So my idea maybe for the next time, you can look for the object track in videos. Okay. Is that okay for you? Yes, exactly. It's then okay. let me uh, simplify this in object track. The, the, the We can track the objects in the videos uh, and let's relate ourselves to data set, maybe the human body recognition. So human body recognition, you need to always uh, track the junction points, right? And then put a name for it. Okay, for example, crawling, sting down, I don't know, something. So look for the, let's be specific, let's look for the human body movement recognition in videos. Okay. If we can do this, if we recognize the movement, then we can convert it to some instructions to imitate, to be imitated by the robots. Did we agree on it? Is it okay for you? Yeah, it's okay. So like uh, for this week, what should I start with? Uh, what, so start with the human body recognition, human body movement, position, pose. Uh, you have the paper, right? The second or yes. third paper. Yes. Then try to download the data set. Okay. And in that data set, I think there will be many videos. Try to uh, locate the moves in that videos by implementing a deep learning algorithm. It will take you maybe two weeks, okay, not only one week. Yes. Sir. But uh, just try to search for the GitHub. I don't want you to do a new model, okay? I don't want you to create a new model. But you can get into the details of this by implementing a toy project already done. So copycat project, okay? So download the already compiled data set. Just try to run over this data set already, maybe train model to locate the, uh, or to detect, to caption the moves in the videos. Okay, here is the paper with code. Okay. Okay, here is that. You can write the here body. So the body net, for example, you see that? Mm. So this is the paper that there will be the code some of the time, most of the time. And you can download this code and make it run for you. And you see that there could be some data sets. You see that, but look here, that's the data set. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, some authors share the code or sometimes some individuals uh, try to create okay. the code by themselves and share it. Great. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. So let's make it. Uh, maybe we are not gonna meet next week. Two weeks later, we can meet. Okay. Yes, sir. I hope this time frame you can read more about imitation learning, human body pose recognition, mm -hmm. and uh, coding, uh, running some model on the data sets. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. But keep it simple. Yes. All right. Any questions? No, sir. Thank you. Actually, I think I'm going to uh, uh, do this one also. This one is actually uh, suitable. The, it has the data set and the code. So I think I can go with it and to implement this one. Okay. So you can search here yes. for something and you can look. Yeah. Relational, great. Yes. Okay, you can check this. Mm -hmm. And of course, please keep reading the literature. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes. See you two weeks later. Okay, sir. See you. Okay. Thank bye you. bye. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care.